Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can't hey choose what yeah. I want hey Mecca, lecca, hi, mecca, hiney, ho. Remember that? Yeah, a little bit. Pee-wee. Yeah. Was big I was a huge peewee guy, then he jerked off in my living room, and uh, we haven't talked since. He got in trouble for jerking off in a porn theater. Yeah. That what feels like, that, I mean, what are you doing there? That's like getting in trouble for getting uh, farting in a p- public bathroom. That's what we're supposed to do, yeah, right? Yeah, very similar. Yes. There should be places that you don't shit, but you just fart. A little fart oh, house. Oh, a fart room. Oh, I gotta tell you, I got the biggest laugh I've Ooh. ever gotten in my whole life. Shark tank. Okay, okay, keep going. That's not bad. I came up with an idea with my nephew and niece. Pop shart. Pop It's shart. a pop tart. You put it in. When it pops out, you just shit your pants. Ah. Which, uh, they're 10 and 6. I have to preface. I mean, they were on the floor. Oh, okay, okay. I got you. I, <laughs> I thought mean, you were maybe, talking about how hot they were. No, I'm saying that the twos gays may not be uh, you know, laughing at this. They're like, pop shart. What's happened to this guy? No, nah, it's not bad. But the kids, really, pop shart. And it's fun for the kids because shart is a combination of shit and fart. Sure. But they can say it. That's true. Yeah, so they're like, this is great. Uh, I mean, they could say it around me. Yeah, good I th- point. I think I'm that uncle. I got my, my nephew oh. just says beehole all the time. Beehole, easy, the language. He's, but he's six, and he's just, they had a babysitter, and then she was like, yeah, he said beehole a couple hundred times. And uh, Yeah, oh, yeah, concerned. it sticks with him. Boy, a new word for a kid. It, it's like a, it's like getting pussy for the first time. Oh. Like, woo, baby. <laughs> you can't wait to do it all the time. It's all he says. I mean, it's literally all he talks about. He's like Rain Man. He's just like beehole, beehole, 400 Oak Street, beehole. Woo. By the way, isn't it funny that a hole, b hole, and c hole all work? I guess d hole too. Well, D-hole. cunt hole. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's all holes. You got to get to e before there's no hole. That's a good way to learn the alphabet. <laughs> That'll teach the kids. A hole, b hole, c hole, d hole. <laughs> There's your clip. There's, There's your, your clip. Podcast, clip it, folks. Put it in your pipe and blow me. Woo. But so listen to this. So this one, no you ever have point. these moments where you're like, obviously we want laughs. You want to get a laugh. Sure, love a laugh. You care about laughs. By the way, my shirt's a little small. I, I got fat and strong at the same time. Fat and Stronger, strong. I should say. Someone's going to email me. Yeah, I got a little. Yeah. Let's not go crazy. A little beefier. Be you know, every way you can get beefier. Yes. Except for my cock. Yeah, that's it's a muscle that you can't work out. Oh, I work it out, baby. Well, I mean, it can't grow. Nephew. I put a steroid right in there and uh, <laughs> nothing. Isn't there a penis pump? You pump it. I tried all that. Yeah. No pump. Felt good. No but... good, huh? What do you, you got a little mediocre, you think? I'm, oh, I'm a medium uh, rare. Yeah, it's and it's veiny, too. So I'm medium and veiny. So vein is good. Vein is good? Vein is good because it's ribbed. You're so veiny. <laughs> but yeah, all right, I'm ribbed. Chuck, what are you working with over there? I feel like you might have a decent piece. What do you, you got nine you, women. I said de- decent is probably the best way to okay, describe okay. it. Okay, okay. D-hole. What I'm are you thinking of 5.8? Yeah, yeah, 5.6, 8 in a good day. Okay, I feel better now. Because right. like, you're like Armenian or something, right? <laughs> Portuguese a Portuguese, bit. Portuguese. Oh, yeah, Portugal. Yeah. Yeah. You okay. know, if you head east from Boston, uh-huh. you think you're in London, but you're actually in Portugal. Is that right? Yeah, or New York even. You go due east, you're thinking like, oh, I'll be in Dublin. Right. But you go into Portugal. I, well, maybe that's the continental shift. Isn't it the, the, the continents keep moving? Is that right? I think it's a drift. Isn't it a drift? Is it a drift or Tokyo. a shift? Tokyo's drifting. Yeah, yeah, and driftwood. Oh, Canadian driftwood. Aha, uh-huh. the worst kind. <laughs> But yeah, there's a there's Arcadian. a, there's a shift. Maybe it's tectonic. Shift. Tectonic shift. Uh, yeah, that's when the the earthquakes or whatever. Ah, uh, yes, I it's think. all changing. It's all pipes. Tectonic plates, they shift. Plate uh, shift. Uh, commemorative. <laughs> Remember those? That was a big thing on TV. Hey, yeah. get your NASA plate or whatever. They're still on. If you click over, every once in a while I'm on Delta Airlines and I, they have live TV. Yes. So I want to know, I'll peek into the news if there's a news story, but I don't know who's next to me. Mm. So I don't want to be judged. 
Right. So if I go on CNN, I'm afraid he's like a right wing guy being like, look at this fucking liberal oh. cuck watching CNN. But I don't if he's a, if he's a liberal, I don't want him being like, look at this piece of shit Nazi watching Fox News. Right. So I'll click back and forth. So I'm one of those guys that watches all the news. Yeah. You could just watch porn and be done. It's funny how porn is less awkward than the the political. Well, Delta's not offering porn just yet. Well, I've seen some uh, titties on a couple the uh, flights. They do. They have Carrie, and Carrie just opens with like. High school nudity. Is that right? It's wild. The opening scene. They're just going. Remember to check that out. They're just going through the locker room, and it's just high school tits. What? And I'm on the flight. I'm like, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, that's not just I got tits. A hoodie on. That's high school tits. And it's Bush tits. Bush. Bush and tits. President. No, he stinks. Two of them. Ah, Bush Jr. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm on Fox. If you go on Fox News and you watch uh, Fox News during the day, you're still getting commemorative plates. Wow! Oh yeah, big time. The Eagle with the with the you know the the nine eleven. Yes, it's like the yes. World Trade Center and the Eagle ah. with a, fla- a torn flag behind him, and uh, it's 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 Eagle nine eleven plate. It's there's coins. There's always a coin. Bitcoin. Love Bitcoin. You know, it's like, hey, get a chip. What is that? Chippewa? What's that old penny? Chippewa Falls. No. It's Sacagawea. A, Sacagawea. Yeah. That's it. Fall sack. Yes, a Jawea. So uh, you get the sack. And then the other one is stamps. Sometimes stamps they have stamps. Big. Tramp yeah. stamp. I got beetle stamps. I don't know. Does anybody know? I have like uh, nine... Beetle stamps really? from like, and they were still in like a little plastic sheet. It was like when Anthology came out. Oh, that's big. In like 95. And they're like authentic mint condition. It might be give, something. Give that a goog here. We can go on eBay right now and make about $11 with that. Beetle stamps, mint condition, something. There might be a lot of Beatles, Beatles stamps. Yeah, there's probably, these aren't like, you know, 1965. Right. This is 95. Oh, right, right, but 95 right. is 35 years ago or whatever true. the fuck. This is 30. true. 25. I can't remember what year it is. Isn't it wild that there's only one living beetle? They just keep dropping off. We only got there's one two. left. Oh, that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Ringo and Paul. A oh, Paul. I thought Paul got shot in uh, Buffalo. No, no. Oh, he's, okay. I thought he was at the Texas Duval. He's alive and well. That was uh, a there was a comic, Mary Beth Cowan had an old joke. She said the Beatles invaded America in nineteen sixty four. So far we've only killed two of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great job. Not bad. <laughs> Woo. Not bad, but she quit. Let me tell you about this laugh I got. Wait, wait, wait. One of them was cancer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just. Well, that's thought, even funnier. I know. I thought one, two got assassinated. But one almost did. George. He got stabbed. A guy broke into his house and stabbed him. In the what? Scorsese doc, he literally says he's like, while I'm getting stabbed, I had a moment. I stepped out of my the moment and was like. Is this how my life ends? Yeah, that's wild. And he's thinking, like, I've done all these things. I've been all over the world. I'm in the Beatles. I'm George Harrison, for Christ's sake. And I'm going to die by some lunatic coming into my house and stabbing me? That's the breaks, Georgie Porgy. I mean, that's <laughs> how it happens. It's it's uh, That's why you got to love LL Cool J. Another, uh, Do I? Well, another <laughs> artist. But he had a guy break into his house, and he beat the shit out of him, and the guy left. Oh, wow. He's like the Nolan Ryan of... <laughs> Nolan Ryan did that? No, Nolan Ryan. Remember, Robin Ventura was 23 years old. He he, he charged the mound on Nolan Ryan, who was 46. And Nolan Ryan beat the snot out of him. Is that right? Oh, my God. You got to see it. He puts him in a headlock and just punches his face. (laughs) Once I finish with the teenage tits, I'm going right to Nolan Ryan. Oh, it's amazing. Nolan Ryan's like 61. Robin Ventura's 11. He just beats the snot out of him. Wow. Well, the arm on that guy, you know, that's years of cranking him out down the line. That's got to be a stiff upper lip. Big arm. And then they didn't get thrown out, which is the funniest thing of all time. They were just like, all right, it's Nolan. Let him pitch. And he started it. The other guy charged the capital. So that's what you get. I guess so, but typically when you throw punches into somebody's face, you're removed from the ball game. Well, don't uh, rile up the goose if you can't take the beak. If you plant <laughs> corn, you get corn. Yes, good band. Mm-hmm. Not really. I found these stamps. You're not going to be very excited oh, for this. Let know. me see if they're the right stamps. They uh, they look uh, they're purpley and orange. No, that's not that. That's not that's that. Ugly. No, no, no. Those, those are ugly. Are, those stink. Those, yeah. oh, I wouldn't Bad be caught stamp. dead with that stamp. Bad stamp. <laughs> I wouldn't stamp my mother's asshole with those. No, I sorry. love to stamp my mother's asshole. Oh yes, I could do we up. Uh, Let me just get right oh, to the sorry. story. I yeah. cut you off there. We digressed. Huge. Uh, so I go out to Gig Harbor, Washington, which is where uh, old Derek Donovan and the family lives now. A beautiful town. Pacific Northwest. That's correct. Yes. Just south of Tacoma. Ah. About 10 minutes from Tacoma Comedy Club. Okay. that's a it, that's, That area feels un... 
a little less touched. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like you, you go over in New York, it's all graffiti. Everything's been shit on and mm-hmm. jizzed on. It's like a like a worn out vagina. But then you go to the Pacific Northwest, it feels fresh. Well, it just feel it's magical because now it's summer. Everything's blooming, flowers, and it's just that bright green. The trees just come up over the highway. I mean, just the trees, Johnny. Oh yeah, it's spectacular. It's the it's the Emerald State or Emerald Square Mall, whatever it's called. Oh, not the Isle. No, Kelly from the Emerald Isle. It's on the Irish Springs. I never never cared for that. Oh, I love Irish Springs. Me too. I like whatever you like. Well, you cut it and you go. <laughs> I don't know why you have to cut the soap. It's not a, it's not a cigar. Yeah, they always cut it in the commercial. Remember a guy took a sliver off? Remember mm. that, Chuck? Or maybe I made that up. He always, <laughs> the guy went... I don't remember the sliver. And he went, some Irish Mick patio fag guy was like, ah, Irish Spring. I vaguely, I think I forget the commercial. I was like Dove, and now I get... My uh, sister-in-law sends us, like, organic super soap from Marfa, Texas. Wow, super soap. <laughs> I had that gun in, in high school. <laughs> it's got chunks of wood in it. It's like a special soap. It's I've organic, seen that. whatever. It's like 15 bucks a bar. Woo wee! Jesus Christ. Well, uh, I'm more of a Cliff Bar guy, but yeah, I, I've seen that. You ever had lava soap? Lava soap. Lava no. soap. I had it's a lava lamp once. It's green. It's got chunks of kids' teeth in it and pubes and all this shit. And you, you, mechanics use it to get the real <laughs> jizz off. I swear to God, you get those uh, those oily hands with the gas on them. You need the lava. They're for elephants. Uh, <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. One of the best deliveries ever. Uh huh. The uh, yeah, the shower head for elephants. I can't even do it. It's so good. Talk low about flow. Seinfeld here. Low flow. Okay, so I'm, I'll keep digress. So I'm in Gig Harbor. It's a yes. beautiful town. I want to move there. There's no fucking kooks over there. It's just nice and affluent and special and gay. Untouched. So the last night, the kids, are, you know, they're, they're 10. They're, they're about to be six, one of them. And it's the last night. They're winding down. And they love Funkle Joe. I mean, I'm just a barrel sure. of laughs. I'm the Tasmanian devil of fun. So when I'm leaving, they start to get a little sad. Uh-huh. You know, it's late at night. It's their bedtime. I'm leaving at 6 a.m. So they won't see me. They're all crying. Yeah. It's, just, it's embarrassing. Sure. Well, you're the beehole man. I mean, come on. I'm a popular guy. So I just wish that my wife loved me the way my niece and nephew do. It'd be nice. I wish I was like, all right, I'm heading to side splitters. And she's like, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I'll tell you, my lady does that, and it annoys the hell out of me. So it's all relatives. But like, incest. cry, crawl under the couch, no, cry. No, no, I don't want that. I'd hit her with a stun gun if she did that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, she she does like the ah, uh, and I'm like, what do you mean ah? Uh, I'm on the road every weekend. But then Alan, our therapist, was like, that's good. Don't you want her to be missed yet? And want her to be upset? I'm like, ah, I guess you're right. She loves you. Yeah, she could be like, thank Christ. I got to go fuck Big Dick Bubba as soon as you're gone. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, anyone else hard? <laughs> BDB. Yeah, yeah. So, um, 5.8. So they're saying uh, goodnight, and they're crying, and I got to go pee. So we had a big dance party. I see. We like, they love Gangnam Style. Ah, they go crazy to Gangnam Style. Big hit. Then I played Smells Like Teen Spirit for them. I shoved that right up their ass. That cooks. Still cooks. It cooks. I hurt my neck, so I was headbanging. So ah, that's an old man right there. Big big dance party, but I got it hooked up to, like, they got one of those speakers that's, like, nine feet long. You know, Jeez. the Hershey Bar s- speaker? Hershey Bar speaker? No, no. I don't know. Who's that? The guy who gives the the, the TED Talk at Nestle? All right. I had to pull that out of my ass. The Hershey Bar speaker. It looks like a big... It's big and long. It's like a big apple pie. It's like five feet long. Does it have almonds or no almonds? <laughs> no almonds. Okay. I like the Hershey bar with almonds. No bozo. <laughs> it's a collab from the 60s, man. So it's a big bar. The music is just pumping. So I go. I, we, it starts to wind down. They're getting sad. So I go to the bathroom. Got to take a piss. And I start, you know, when you, you go to the bathroom nowadays, you got to check your phone. Of course. So I watch some, someone sent me a, a, a GIF, a GIF, whatever. You, I think it's a GIF, but I like to say GIF. I say GIF as well. It's a G. We're going GIF or GIF. God's gift GIF. to women. God's gift. So I play that because it's, it's an animated GIF where it's like, oh, hello, oh, hello, oh, hello, whatever. Mm. You know how these work? So, But as soon as I play it while I'm pissing, getting ready to piss, I hear it in the other room because I realize I'm still connected to the Bluetooth. Oh. So now I'm like, oh, this is big. Yes. So I go to my recorded fart. I have on my recording. Oh, classic. The I Matt play Wayne. The, I play the fart. 
No, the one that was mine that we played on the thing. I'm oh, like, that was a classic. So I play that one, and I just hear this big laugh. But then I realize I can re- I can record whatever I want in here. Uh huh. So then I get the recorder going like a set. Yes. And I go, oh my god, I'm so glad uh, they can't hear this. And then I just record my entire piss like naked gun. Oh, this is great! What with an a, uncle with a big woo at the end. And, oh. then, I, and then I go, uh oh. <laughs> Like a Ferris Bueller crazy fart. I mean, at this point, Derek must be going, uh, how do I top this? I'm a horrible father. This guy's coming in and killing, and he leaves, and I got to be the the bad cop. So I hit play on this thing, and I mean, it's full vol. It's like 300 volumes or whatever, <laughs> decibels. Decibels. And... Decibel points. I'm, I can't come out because it'll ruin it. I just hear, like, just laugh. It, it's like deaf comedy jam in oh. there. The kids are on the floor. I got a nine-minute piss. Followed by a fart and uh, on the loudspeaker blasting throughout the house. And Amazing. Do they know you know what you're doing or do they think he thinks he's, he doesn't know he's being recorded? Well, ah. I think the adults know. The kids, I don't know what. But just for a kid to just hear the sound of piss. Oh, gold. It's just too Shower. much. And it was a long, long old man piss. So. Oh, that's great. Wow. And good on you for realizing that and then being like, I can use this. It was big and I come out and I mean, Joey, he's like, he's just on the floor. It's like, he was he was in, in shambles. Man, these are the best sets here of your life. You know, forget the road. These children. I want to quit comedy, move to Gig Harbor, have a backyard, smoke cigars, and, and fuck a couple kids because it's just delightful out it there. Sounds like heaven to me. It's a good living out there. So uh, I mean, this is why fun. these guys, you know, like Barney, Elmo, uh, the Blues Clues, Queef, whatever his name is, Paw Patrol. Yes, that's big. Teletubby, all these uh, weirdos. They all end up banging kids because their whole life is just pleasing children and laughs and laughs, and the kids love them and they climb on top of them. But eventually, <laughs> something's gonna slip in. <laughs> you ever hear about this guy? I heard about him last night for the first time. I think he's British, mm. and he was molesting kids yes. in wheelchair, like I uh, heard like about crippled this. kids. Jimmy Saville. Jimmy Saville. Yeah, yeah, and he looks a little bit like Alan, quite frankly. Alan Liftwitz. No, he's blonde. He's like a blonde, skinny guy. Pull him up. He's like Pull a Ric Flair, Alan Leftwitz. He's got the similar. Hair and a mustache, so you know this guy pretty good. Well, he's my uh, comedy influence. No, uh, no, I, I keep hearing about this guy. I haven't seen the doc because I can't watch it. It's too too sad. He was going to burn units, you know, like how Johnny Depp will dress up as Jack Sparrow oh. and then drink and you know hit the kids. He was going there and taking him into the bathroom, and these kids, you know, they got the jimmy legs. They can't walk, and he would he would drag them into the bathroom and plow them and then bring them right back out and play it's, with the toys. I didn't know there was a doc. My, my sister-in-law was telling me about it. He looks, he's got a, a real froey Ric Flair thing, and he's got cigars, and he's like, ooh Yeah, he was like the biggest guy in the 60s. He knew everybody. He was like friends with the Beatles, like all in, celebrity. And, uh, oh, there he is. Wow. Where, where are you getting Alan out of that? Hold on, that's not a good one. <laughs> type in his name and then Alan. <laughs> no, type it. Go to Google side. Image. There's a few <laughs> images. One of them, he had the, the the squirrely hair and I think a beard. All right. I think. Maybe yeah. I was just looking at a photo of Alan. I don't I know. I think you were. I think you, you equate Alan with fucking. But, I yeah, love. this guy's bad news. He was banging all these, uh, you know, uh, Underprivileged. There you there go. There it is. And they go, hey, it's Jimmy Sabill. I could do worse. It was one of those things. Hey, hey, folks, you've heard us talk about our love for Native. They know it's not just what's on the inside that counts, but what's on the outside, too. And you don't want to smell too bad on the outside. That's why Native is releasing their deodorant in new plastic-free packaging. I love Native. I'm wearing it right now. My lady wears Native. I like the unscented. I just want to not smell. But they they got great scents, too. And it feels good because it's good for the environment. New recyclable package deodorant saves 37 grams of plastic. Native is also committing to 1% of their sales to environmental nonprofits. All of Native's other deodorants are aluminum and paraben-free. Kill order back odor-causing bacteria. Give you 24-hour odor protection. Choose from 10 different scents. Woo! Baby, classic. Coconut and vanilla. You name it. Lavender. I love it. So, you want to try plastic-free deodorant? Go to nativedeo.com slash Tuesdays with Stories, one word, or use promo code Tuesdays with Stories at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash Tuesdays with Stories, or use promo code Tuesdays with Stories, one word, 
at checkout for 20% off your first order. We deal with enough plastics. You're drinking plastic, you're eating plastic, you're blowing plastic. How about you just get off of it completely? Get native. When you've had a long day and you want to unwind like a grown-up, grab your favorite Lucy gum or nicotine pouch. I grew up uh, puffing a few cigs every now and then. I even tried some dipping. And you get that nicotine kick. We all love the nicotine, but why do you want the other crap? You don't want the tar and the, the crap and the dog crap and the queefs. So get the old Lucy gum. I've been looking for an alternative to smoking. Why not switch to nicotine product you can feel good about? If you enjoy using nicotine, you should definitely check out Lucy's products at lucy.co. That's lucy.co and use promo code TUESDAYS at checkout. And if you're a listener from Canada, you can now get Lucy at ca.lucy.co. <laughs> Also, I have to read this disclaimer. You know, the mumbo jumbo. This product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. But what isn't? Remember, if you're interested in a better way to use nicotine, visit lucy.co and be sure to use that promo code Tuesdays. Get on it. Gee whiz. But anyways, I I, I was killing out there in Gig Harbor. But I guess we could go back to lunch. I mean, I'm all over the place. Yeah. We, we got to do uh, a lot of material here today. Well, so. it's crazy to think. First of all, we were in London for, what, nine days? I was there for 11. 11. 11 think, big ones. I think I was there for eight. And, you know, you sit there a month ago and you go, boy, I got a London trip coming up. That's passports. That's COVID tests. That's a, a big flight, you know, a big TV thing. And you just, you, it's so daunting. And now it's all over. Yeah. Isn't that weird how that works? But it's all done. And... I mean, we covered most of it in the London app, which check it out if you haven't seen it. That but was a fun app. Fun app, hot app, lunch app. But you left. When you left, it was a there was a dent. I bet. It yeah. Was just a tectonic shift. Well, I feel like I'm the straw that stirs the drink over there. I really felt like a nuclei, you know. A lot of tea. Yeah. Because. Yeah. When I showed up, you already were there, and you already had established a base. I mean, I ran into your room, kicked the door down, and started sucking you off. I, I, I yes. just, I needed you. you Jimmy saved me. And so when you left, other people come in, and then no one, you, you kind of go, hey, we're doing breakfast at 4 or whatever. Sure. 4 a.m. So uh, nobody's willing to do that. So we kind of had to step up to the plate. Right. But uh, we made it work, and it was fine. But... It was weird because I did a show with you. I was green. I didn't know what I was doing. A TV show. We did a TV show, a game show, and then you left, and I had to do another one without you. Right. And it sucked. Well, we got to get into the show because we recorded before we did the TV show. Is that right? Of course. Ah. I did the TV show and left five hours later. I I jumped on the side of a plane like Tom Cruise. Sure, like in Afghanistan. (laughs) They're trying to get out of there. I mean, so we got to get into that, but I mean, it was such a fun trip, and part of me didn't want to leave, but I also wanted to get the fuck out of there, but yeah. it was such good living, because we were at the five-star hotel, Ooh. the Top Hat Hotel, I call it, and we were in Mayfair, and there's no kooks over there. I don't know if you guys know this. There's not kooks in Europe. No kooks. You'd see every now and then, you see one guy going, can I get a little change there, lassie, or whatever, and it was polite and nice, and that was about it. He was regular. I mean, we saw, Luke uh, Monas and I saw one guy in Soho the whole time. I mean, 11 days, we saw one guy who was like, ah, you fucking, ah, yeah. like a pirate fella. But they keep to themselves, even. They're not, like, lunging at you like they are here. Oh, it's bad news bears here. But the whole trip was fine. I mean, you got there. It was so nice. And I felt bad because you were with your lady. Yeah. So I didn't know what the ah, policy is. Interrupt. Um, third three, wheel threesome. thing. Fuck us. And then I felt bad because she's like looking for action. I'm like, there's a beautiful park. I- I'm 55 years old. I right. walked you guys to a park. It was raining. I'm like, look at the flowers. Well, this, this... I caught her rolling her eyes a couple times. It was bad. She hates flowers. She hates nature. She hates a view. She hates she hates beauty that's like mm. natural. She'll be like, look at this dress. It's unbelievable. Look at these shoes. Oh, she's one of those people. You want to be like, shoes? Come on. I got a sunset right here. And she, she queefs right in my face. Yeah. I mean, I felt bad. And she's like, can we go to a live? And it, it, it hurt my soul because she's like, I'd like to go to a livelier part of town. And I'm like, she where is it? said that? Yeah. I walked 40 miles the opposite direction to the park. I see. Yeah. She said that's when we went to Soho. I was like, oh, geez, sorry. Uh, well, I think she wanted to see the city. You know, you're in London. We can go to a park anywhere. But to be fair, I did do this. I try to be careful about this i texted and said i'm going here that's the move you feel like joining that is the best and you guys said yes so it was in your court 
Yeah, well, I think we saw the park, and then we'd go somewhere else. Saw the park and went over to Soho, had a nice, uh, found a nice pub. We had a, had a couple beers at a pub. We had fish and chips. Um, I love the pub culture there. I love that 5 o'clock, they're spilling out of there. Mm-hmm. It all, everybody's all dressed up from their office gig. They're all in suits, and they're all trying to get laid. And then by 8 o'clock, <laughs> streets are empty. Yeah, it's very quiet, but yeah, it's fun to see all those suits. You see guys in suits on bikes. And, I love uh, it. They got their shit together over there, and they socialize more. I saw a lot less phone staring mm. in London. I think they're a little healthier mentally over there. I think everything about it's healthier than here. I know there's going to be people with bald eagle tattoos yeah, writing to yeah. us and saying, fuck your mother. <laughs> By the way, we got to talk a little bit about this, because we couldn't on the last episode. Ah. So we played a road game in the studio. We a rented a game. studio. At uh, oh, the comedy club, a road game. I yeah, see, so I we see. had we had to find a studio, and Fanny, our uh, our what is Fanny? Our uh, trusty sidekick, ad lady, esteemed uh, colleague, producer. I don't know what she go. is. Well, I don't know what her title is, but she's the 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 backbone of this show. Sorry, Chuck. Yeah, she's, she's got like a bigger dick. Yeah, she's like Chuck, but a nicer cock. Yes. And uh, we love you, Fan. Fanny's just the best, and she's been with us for a long time. Big fan of Fanny. Shout out to Jared Freed, by the way, who hooked us up with the fan. Hey, all right, Freedman. Freedy. And uh, anyway, so she rented us a studio, but we did a little math and number crunching. We, it was a half hour away. Then we had a rehearsal for the show. Yes. So we had to find something quick. And another shout out to 21 Soho. Yes. When I did my show there, there was a podcast studio. I said, hey, this could work pretty good. I put it in the back of the asshole. Right, right. The old noggin. Yeah. So thanks for for helping us. We did a cool show. We did a fun app in there. It was in the basement of basically like a production studio or a comedy club. Who knows what the hell that place is. But they assigned us a couple engineers and one of them the whole show I mean you can go back and watch the last show there was one guy he was Ooh. not into it a little frosty <laughs> he did not Chuck he wasn't no he, he was I've never missed your 5.8 more I mean this one guy was on the ones and twos he was eye rolling he was sneering he was snickering he was scolding and then we had another guy on the camera and he fell asleep the half he of the was thing. dozing off with the camera here and it's right next to his head so he kept going like and I thought he was going to knock the whole thing over. I mean, you're mid-show, and you're trying to zing and zang. And they were very nice, very calm. They did a professional sure, job. We appreciate sure. it. But the one guy was just, we're not for everybody, obviously. And he was kind of making this face. Yeah, yeah. He didn't love the uh, the fodder. And the other guy was doing a head nod. Fought, like, so it's a bad combo. You got sleepy, and then you got cranky. Crump, you know? Grumpy, <laughs> grumpy, you, got, you got dopey and queefy. Uh, so it was a bad dwarf situation. Yeah, it was tough. And it was, it was tough sledding. You can't just be like, by the way, there's a guy that's just staring at us. He hates it. You know, you couldn't say it. So we, it was like a hostage situation. And you had to plow through. You couldn't you couldn't just focus on the, the negative. You had to just, oh, whatever. There's people at home enjoying this. Fuck it. Keep but going. It, if you notice and rewind, I'm dying laughing the whole time because, I mean, first of all, you're being hilarious. But then there's nothing funnier than you being funny within <laughs> the same vision, a guy like this. I know. And I, I was losing it. It's like class back, it's back to eighth grade again where the teacher's like, <laughs> and the kid's like, ah, or whatever it is, you know? It's a good time. It was wild, so thank, thank that. And then even when we ended, it was like, thank We were blowing them. We were like, thank you Trying. so much. God bless you. We appreciate you saved us. And they were like, please leave this fucking area. Well, that's the one thing I'll take away from London is... There's a more of a professionalism there. I feel like in America we let our queefy emotions get involved and we get mad and blah, blah, blah. There they bottle everything and then they're a little passive aggressive. That's how they get it out. We yes. get it out like, fuck you, shut up, I hate that guy. They don't say any of that. They just go, and then they go, there you go, mate. I'll see you in hell, right. whatever the hell it is. Yeah, that's like Sarah's parents. They're you know British. They're very yeah. stern. Stern. Tough. Daniel. Front bow, back stern. So, yeah, we we did the, first of all, just to break down the game show, I don't want to give too much away. It's going to be on the CW in 2048. <laughs> you but, guys are going to be all over this thing. Yeah. So it's basically a show where you do puns and, uh, you know, they go, hey, what's a book and a meat? And you go, Harry Pot Roast. You know, yes, and uh, the crowd goes not wild, but uh, they go mild. Yeah, they go mild. <laughs> so that's the show. 
And it's just a bunch of those, and you can't really comment if a joke bombs. They don't want any authenticity. Then you do stand-up, and they pick the jokes you do. So I did a joke from 1984. I can't even remember. And it's tough. It was a, it was a culture shock. It was tough. It was fun. And I think the show will be fun. I did have yeah. fun, but it was... We kind of thought... Is somebody mowing the lawn? It sounds like it. What is? How is that noise coming from this office? Is it construction somewhere? Maybe it's construction. Maybe. That's oh. not bothering me. It just oh, sounds it like a be, lawnmower. It might be a vacuum. Ah, uh, vacuum. 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 It's very similar know. to the lawnmower. We're similar emotions when you're young. Ah, you don't want to do it. They're both like, you don't want to do it. When someone else is doing it, it's annoying. You're trying to watch the ball game or the sure. cartoon or whatever, and you're just like, please, shut the fuck up. And you don't want to miss a spot. You go in rows, just like a, like a lawnmower. Yeah. You get a Mexican similar. to do it. Whoa. <laughs> um, no, I did. I mowed the lawn every week at my parents' house. So, where were the fuck were we? I get distracted. But London the Town, foggy. Oh yeah, so we had to do the TV chief. show. So the TV show, you, you get a call from your agent, your manager, and they go, "Hey, there's a thing in London. They want you." And then you don't even listen to the details. No, it was a pretty penny. Sure, it was paid, a nice chunk of change. Paid well. And then I just want to go to London. Of course. First class flight, amazing hotel. How can you say no? A couple, couple bucks. And so I go, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's, uh, you know. Gay porn. Yeah, or a pun show. I'm happy to go do it. Sure. And so we say yes. And then I was booked. And then you were like, are you doing this thing? And I was like, oh, my God, do it. Yes. Please. So yes. it's all my fault. No, I mean, I'm glad I did it. But it was a lot of work. I mean, they would give you packets, and you were giving me shit. I felt like Kramer, uh, you know, before the marathon. I'm smoking cigars, I'm drinking, I'm playing poker, and you're like, this is a lot, man. I hadn't even cracked the, the attachment yet. Well, I lived it. So I went yes. there, and so I had this moment. I'm like, I, you know, you guys know me. You know me. I go somewhere. I'm walking. I'm out. I'm not yeah. sitting around working. No, no, same. You got to explore. So I felt like they undersold how much work it would be. You got that right. They were like, and I'm not a, a, a write a packet guy. I'm not like no. a sit down and no, focus. Sorry, Bob. My process is like, no, oh, that was weird. And I put a three word note in the phone and then you go on stage and you go, the other day I was fucking my dad and he came in my ass and it was weird. Now you got a closer. And then you record that, you listen to that and you go, maybe it'd be funnier if I said he came in my eye. Aha! Uh -huh. I'm That's not comedy. sitting and Grind, grind no, no, no. So, I mean, I, I've done one packet in my life. It was for Amy Schumer's show. If you're not familiar, they to get writers, they send comedians a packet. You got to write like ten sketches, fifty eight jokes, three uh, partridge in a pear tree, or whatever, yeah, and then you send haiku. it, and nobody responds. Right, right. Yeah, it's pretty standard. That happens every. I've done ten packets. I've never heard a peep. <laughs> I know. So I told my manager years ago, hey, no more packets. I, no. I want ketchup packets only. Pack it up. <laughs> I'm done with this shit. <laughs> they don't work. I've done auditions. They don't work. Nothing works. Well, then you look at the writing staff, and it's just the, the cousins and friends of the person running the show. You got that right. And Incestual. So, any jizz, we get there, and we have a couple of meetings on the Zoom, and I'm just, like, not even listening. It's like when Chuck talks. I'm just going, okay, whatever. <laughs> let's just get to the show. Small penis, 5.8. We got it. <laughs> 11 women. He's fucking everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I should stop saying that. Sorry. Woo. He's got no... He's, you're, the, you're the only one, young lady. Yes. <laughs> and you too, young man. <laughs> it's just you guys. So... <laughs> young lady. <laughs> so then we have... Uh, a meeting with on the Zoom and the guy, the producer, who is nice and like a legend in television. Big legend. Big he, credentials. Yes. Big resume. Huge. And he says, I having a good... I mean, this is like so embarrassing. It's like from a sketch. He's like, you having a good time in London? I was like, am I? I went to Big Ben. I'm like, I, I got... Uh, I went to see the Queen. I was at yeah. the palace. I'm wearing like the big black yeah. foam hat. Right. You got the little flag. <laughs> I got a flag in my ass. <laughs> And I go, I went there, I walked 40,000 steps, I've been in Regent's Park, I did three sets, and the whole time his face is changing to like, what? Yeah. And he goes, you have been working, right? Uh. And I went, oh yeah, you know me, I'm, I'm, it's all, I'm noodling up while I'm walking around, and I'm going, oh geez, I didn't work at all. Yeah, yeah. And I think Luke Bonez said this first, I think we might have got Funny sandbagged. Because I don't think so. He said, hey, you got... Have four or five jokes for each. Then the lights went on, 
The Brits, there was two British comics. They had like 50 jokes. Un- they got packet on packet on pages. It's unbelievable how much work they had and how much ammo they had. We were out there with a slingshot. They were like <laughs> with a fucking Gatling gun. These guys, Reese James and Glenn Moore, look these guys Woo! up. I mean, insane talents. And on television, in front of a studio audience, cameras, the red light, I had to look in the camera and go, I don't have anything more. Oh, I'm out. They don't allow that in London. They don't fuck around with that. But these this Reese and Glenn guy, I mean, they came out there and they're they're poised. Mm. You know, they sit up straight, they deliver it right on, it kills every time, always gets a laugh. And if you notice, if a joke didn't get a laugh from one of them, they harped on it. Right. They'd be like, oh, I go back to that one joke. How about that? Huh? You guys left me high and dry. And you're like, oh, they left me high and dry on 14 jokes. But you don't see me bitching. It was rough. And they kept being like, do this bit and this. They were so nice and so helpful. But I just couldn't remember. It's old. But you for- people, I-, I don't know about you. I think you're similar. You do especially. You shoot it. And then you just forget that material. You move I, on. I-, I can't even remember. People will quote jokes. And I'm like, I said that? I, I got the- we write a lot of jokes. We were very prolific, I hope. And so uh, these guys go, we want you to do this. This joke from from your whatever show, and you go, oh, I put that to bed. That's like an old relative. I shot it in the head. It had rabies. I buried it. It's done. Yeah, and I never loved her to begin with. You got that right. Uh, but enough about my wife. So anyway, we do the show, and it's like, it was like a beat. It was a whirlwind. I haven't had that feeling in years when we yeah. finished, and it went, it went okay, and it'll edit well. I hope. But I was like, man, I felt defeated. I rode in the back. Of the, they wanted us all to take our own car because of COVID, which is... Silly. Silly. And I, Luke Monas and I like held on to each other tight and rode in the same car. We were like, we got to kill ourselves. Yeah. And then you arrived, I think, two days later. Yes. And so I tried to really give you the warning, and you were not heeding. No heed. No heed. No. I, 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 I said, I got an itinerary. <laughs> I'm going all in. I got the lady here. We're going to really fuck Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and the other guy. I killed Princess Di. I mean, I was busy. I had a I had a schedule. I wanted things to hit, and so then you were worse than me. I'm just gonna come right out and yeah, say, yeah, I was I mean, bad. We were in the meeting, and I had we had the same thing because we were in the meeting, and I was like, I just I can't read. I was like, I didn't know. I, I kept being like, I didn't know that. I, we talked about this in the show. I swear yeah. to God, I have a learning disability. Yeah. It was like italicized and he's like, they were really concerned. But you made me look like fucking, uh, you know, who's who's a smart person? Hawking? Yeah. Hawking. I was going to go hawking, but that felt obvious. Uh, I already used Einstein. Rain Man earlier. Einstein's, Einstein's also a good obvious. One. Uh, 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 what's that guy? Milton? No. Uh, Milton Berle? Lincoln? No. Uh, Lincoln, uh, Newton? Uh, Newton, you Newton. Made me look like Isaac Newton. There we Sir go, Isaac gravity. <laughs> because you were like full retard. I full mean, I, on. I, I went Tropic Thunder. I read like half the shit, had a couple things, and was like, oh, I don't know how to read. Yeah. Oh. You were like, what? huh? Uh, it was bad. I mean, it was ugly in to, the room. To paint a pic, they do a little rehearsal thing where they want to get us all together mm-hmm. around a big conference table, and the whole staff is there. They're all wearing masks. There's a camera there. There's the, the main guy in a suit going, okay, what about this? What about that? And you go, oh, I got it. And he goes, have you been working? And I go, I got it all up here, Big Papa. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> Which doesn't make sense, because if I had it up here, I would just say it. Of course. You know? And, and they I was, were on to me. I was selling you out, too, because I was, I was that guy. Yeah. I was the shithead two days Days earlier, sure. and so when you were doing that, I was like, "How about this fucking uh, idiot?" Yeah, thanks for the help Woo! there, sloppy I like, sloppy. I was like, "Yikes!" Huh? Yeah, and then I was throwing in my own jokes, racial jokes, pedophile jokes, which were doing okay in the room, but I had, I was, I was scrounging. Oh, well, you did a couple that didn't even make sense. He's like foods and songs, and then you were like Led Zeppelin hot dog, and I was like, "Oh, that's bad." <laughs> Tell, tell people it's like this thing was so much longer than a show like this should be though it was like three and a half hours. if you think long. of like at midnight yeah this, I've done that five six times it, it was easy peasy it seemed like your packet because Mark sent me the packet too and I was like I'll help Ouch. out you know then, it's bad then, then I saw how long it was and I was like this is fucked up yeah it, it seems like it was worth like four episodes of at midnight yeah, yeah. Gotta, like, it was so long you gotta so, write thank you. like six to eight jokes for each and it was about Four or five pages long yeah. of jokes. And some of it you have to memorize, too. So you have to not only write it, but you have to member, memorize them yeah. and then say them from a live audience on camera, which will be on TV. It's it's a lot. And do a stand-up set. And be quick. And be funny. And be charming. And be whatever. Professional. So I eventually got it in my head. 
And I go, I'm cracking the books tonight. I'm on tomorrow. I have a noon call. I haven't even opened this thing. And I just went all in. I put the co- the coffee on. I lit a candle. I prayed to Allah five times. And I just sucked it up and did it. And you were there. It was. I struggled. It was okay. It was, it was be- okay. It was, it was but- better than my first one. All right. I think you really came through. Uh, but man, it was it was it was tough sledding. There was yeah. eighteen different categories. I just I just read it. Eighteen wow. different. Roles. Eighteen. You'd have five or six jokes, like you said, memorized, and then you have to do stand up in the middle of all that. That's fucking crazy. That's it was that's a lot. But then it makes sense because you're like. Oh, they flew us first class both ways, put us in a five star hotel, and gave us a chunk of cash. Yep. So, where are the assholes for Agreed. just being like, ah, whatever? Agreed. But I will say this the quiz show, or what, what do they call those shows over there? Panel show? Panel. Mm-hmm. Panel. Those are big there. They have multiple ones. They have Mock the Week and other ones. This was a new one coming out. So, those are, it's like their bread and butter. And I don't think they realize we don't have these. Mm-hmm. So when you send us over there, you gotta prep us on what the fuck this shit is, this shit is. Because I think a lot of these comedians out there, this is their whole job is these right. type of shows. So they know what what it entails and how much work it is. They probably get some writers. They probably help. They get some help. We didn't know any of that. And so we're just like, hey, we're funny guys. We'll go out there and yuck it up and talk about tea and crumpets and why were we wrong? Well, what my thing is, when I think of a panel show, I'm thinking podcast. Uh, I think we're just riffing it off the cuff. Right. So I was like, you got it, dude. Yes. I was like, I'll come in and, and cut it out. I'm like, I'll, I'll just <laughs> kick ass. Now that's good stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, my best writing was it was like song and food. And I was like, like a rolling scone. Yeah. And I was like, how do you like that? Yeah. And there was a couple Tuesdays in the crowd, I, I, I might add. And we apologize because that was a four hour shoot with a lot of like, give me a laugh up here. Ah! We laughed out here, oh. you know all the all the bullshit warm up exercises, and they had to just sit through a lot of bad zingers. You want to know something crazy? Here's what's crazy. I kept talking about it then. Now it's blowing my mind. They're still there. Dulce Sloan, though, who's the host, she's there right yeah. now. All the producers are still in the office right now, briefing people, taping. Ooh, brutal. I am so glad to be gone. Look, I love London. I love Top Secret. We got to talk about that. Oh. But man, am I happy to be home. Top secret, the best. Boy, I was just having the time of my life over there. So I got to tell you something. So you got me into top secret. You you had to bail, so I got in with Mark. By the way, bail, can I just say this? Relative, they're a little disorganized over there. And they're like, we got you for Friday. You're on the website. And I'm like, I leave Thursday. I never was available yeah. Friday. <laughs> so I, I threw them your name. Yeah, so I hit this guy up. He's like, please come on by. It's a great little system over there, what they got. It's this, it's this comedy club, I guess, called Top Secret. They have an upstairs small room and a downstairs big room. Yes. And they do an intermission and they pack it out. It's amazing. It's a hot crowd. It's young people. It's a sweaty room, low ceilings, and it's run like a tight, uh, tight asshole. It's just upstairs, downstairs. Like they go on a break. They go, you're on in five. Nobody goes long. They light you. They give you two lights in London. Yes. They light you when you have two minutes, then one minute, which I, I like. Yes. And so here's my story. I go in first night that I'm there. I had the set of my life on both shows. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm getting carried out of there. There's Tuesdays. I'm taking photos. And Mark sees this. And he's like, oh, shit. I got to book this guy again. I go back the next night. I finish wrapping the show. I got into a black car. I said, fuck the hotel. Take me to Top Secret. He goes, you got it. And I went there. And I ate shit. What? I didn't eat shit. But it was was Saturday night. And it was a different group. Interesting. It wasn't like comedy. It was like night drunk people. Like Mm. date night. Late, it's a little later. And it was later. And I got heckled. I got boo- one guy booed me when I said retard. I mean, it, it, it was a different vibe. Well, I, I mean, I had something similar ish. My first one was a Saturday or Friday night and just blew the roof and doors and windows and the janitor out of the place. Yeah. And then I came back Sunday, 5 30 show. Oh, that's early. And it wasn't a bomb, but it was, it was tough sledding. It, was, it wasn't easy. And yeah. It, was a little, like, it, was, it wasn't great. But then back around the weekdays, yeah, but man, yeah, they, they, you know, I guess it's the same as any other club. Especially, it's weird when you do a club for the first time and it's like the best set. Exactly, you've ever had. exactly. So you think, oh, it's always like this, and then when you have a mediocre, you're like, ah, that hurt, right? But let's so we're speaking of mediocre, we got to talk about <whistles> the old comedy store. <sighs> if you want, I don't want to bring back an old nom flashback or Oof. trigger you. 
This one was rough, and I don't want to give too many details because okay. I don't want this lady to find out and firebomb. Her oh, house. she's a scary lady. So it's very exciting. I had a guy helping me out, Tom uh, Pac-Man. Ah. Yeah, a British guy who lives here, and he works for a company that helps American comics. So shout out to Tom PM. Pac-Man, I'm surprised he didn't ghost you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What are these noises? It sounds like a hurricane. Yeah, that's crazy. It sounds like a like the subway's coming by. Oh uh, yeah. All right, let's go. I think it's a big whoosh. We got a pipe here, and somebody took a turd alert. Mm, Amber pipes. turd. Uh, grumpy. Oh, thank you. Put that, was, that on your show. That was tight and high. It was like a little uh, <laughs> a military haircut like a and tight. <laughs> I was like, Bleh. it was like they were warming up for taps. Uh, <laughs> um, it's like my ex, <laughs> high and tight. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so this guy's, I've never heard these sounds the before. Can the crowd? Katrina out there. It's, it's, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like one of those huge like garage doors or like a huge metal sliding yeah. door. Yeah. Yeah. Very or, strange. Or when you wake up in Hawaii and you're like, oh, the ocean. It yeah. sounds like big waves coming. Mm. Big kahuna. <laughs> That's like a Hawaiian Hawaiian burger joint. <laughs> um, all right, so then the guy, I, I got top secret up the ass. I've like taken over a top secret. They're yeah, like, oh, you yeah. be on every show. The guy's just handing you fistfuls of cash. The, oh. the, the math doesn't even make sense. He gave me like $61 one night, and he gave me change another night. Did you, did you, did you flip it yet, or what do you call it? Exchange it? Yeah, I've been home for a month. <laughs> what are you crazy? Okay. That was uh, a big, big, big moment flipping that dough. I know, and it's it's the reverse of what we've always had. The pound is worth more than cat American ah. money. So I handed them three hundred pounds and they handed me back four hundred and eighty bucks or something like that. You got that right. It was uh. great. It was like we traded in Shelby for Chuck. Yeah, <laughs> there's your compliment. You get one a year. <laughs> Soak it up. No, I was calling him fat. Ah, I thought he was saying you were better. Oh, we handed in, we handed in some and got got bigger. fatter. Okay. Well, I'm not calling you fat. I'm calling you fatter than Shelby. I guess it was a compliment. Wow. It was a compliment. Yeah, you're better than Shelby. Yeah, a, a piece of string cheese is fatter than Shelby. I mean, that guy was <laughs> <laughs> grasping for life at the end. But continue there, Sloppy Joe. You're not fat. I feel bad. I'm just kidding. You've, you've just, lost a lot of weight. That was that was what I was going for. We handed in a little and got back a lot. I like it. That, that, that's better. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't make sense. I feel bad. I ah, you good, fatty. Keep it rolling. Hey, bread and butter. Mm. Right here. Hey there, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Raycon. Nothing is worse than when your earbuds fall out of your ears. Literally oh, yeah. nothing. I had one fall into a pile of dog mess. Wow. One time. Folks. Right in there. Raycon's new fitness earbuds provide a maximum secure fit, so you'll never experience that again. Tell us how well co Raycons stay so well in place. You can't even believe it. My friend has a pair of Raycons, and one time he was being chased by a kook. True story, and they stayed in the whole time. That's how he knew they were the best earbuds around. These things, you can do cartwheels, backflips. They never fall out. They're hard to get out. These, just kidding about the last part. They're easy to get out, but they're hard to, uh, you know what I mean. Anyways, these babies are sturdy and comfy with optimized gel tips from the perfect in-ear fit. They will not budge. Raycons offers nine hours of playtime and a 52-hour battery life. That is insane wow. and much better than their competitors. I can tell you that. Get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. Now is the perfect time to pick up a pair because right now you can get Raycon's fitness earbuds for $20 off at buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. And to make this deal even sweeter, our listeners get an extra 15% off with code Tuesdays. This is a limited time offer, so get in now before it's gone. That's code Tuesdays at buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. Get a, get a pair of earbuds. Do it. Do it now. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by ExpressVPN. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like using speakerphone on a crowded subway. Do you want the whole train to know your business? Absolutely not. Of course not. Internet service provide providers can track every website you go on, and they sell that information to big tech and ad companies. 
Don't you don't want that. It's no good. It's bad. ExpressVPN puts that fear to rest. Just fire up the app with one click of a button. Your network data will be encrypted so no one can see your online activity. It works on phones, laptops, and even routers. Everyone on your Wi-Fi network will be protected too. That's why ExpressVPN is rated number one by The Verge and Tech Radar. Protect your online privacy by visiting expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays today. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Tuesdays, and you can get an extra three months for free. Expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays. Back to the show. By the way, if you're not watching the video, yeah, I guess you're really we're ruining the show. You're missing it's out. Like, it's uh it's no good. So get on the YouTube. Yes. Oh. All right. So wait, what happened? You, we, I cut you off. Oh yeah, no, I cut myself off. Oh, the guy slammed the door. Oh, uh, big slam, this big is, slam. This is no good. Summer slam. It's no good. No good. And we got eight more episodes to go. What's hilarious is when we're walking through the hallway, we're like whispering because we don't want to be assholes. Then we come in here and just start screaming. Yeah, it's like woo. <laughs> so, clown car let out. So uh, I'm at Top Secret. Then the guy messaged, and you know me, I don't like to have too much. Uh, Insanity going. So the uh, guy, I'm at, I got two spots at Top Secret. Then he gets the message. Can you do the comedy store? Legendary club in course, London. Of course, of course. Right in the heart of Leicester Square. So I'm like, well, we'll see what time. And it worked out because my my uh, spots at Top Secret were like 9.30 and then comedy store 8.30 and they're about a 10-minute walk. So I was like, okay, this is perfect. We're zinging and we brought the whole gang. We had all the comics. We, we followed you because we're like, hey, I want to see the comedy store. The whole gang. It was Ismail Lutfi who's fun, and Luke Moniz, who's fun, and, yeah. and you. And so now I'm the guy from out of the country doing a guest spot who's showing up with three friends. Three mooks. <laughs> so we get there. And this is a serious club. This is like the comedy cellar of London. Of course. So we go up there, and it's like a door guy, and the security, and I have to be like, hey, I'm on the show, and these are my three buddies. Yeah. Which is just egregious. Yeah, and it's, it's a little amateur too. <laughs> you know, like, hey, I got my crew here. What are we, uh, you know, Eddie Griffin? <laughs> so we go down single file, and there's like four windows you have to get through. So every person I had to be like, I brought three friends. Is that okay? And then they give you tickets and stamps. It's silly. And I'm like, I can't have my friends. These are comics. Yes. Sitting in there I mean, with TV credits. You got that right. We're here to film a show. Yeah. So then I go back. I got to talk to like the, the sound guy. And I, I go into the green room. I got to talk to them. I'm like, can I bring three American comedians back here? <laughs> and then there's four of that. There's four people in the green room, dressing yeah. room at, at uh, the comedy store. Oh, yeah. Keep it low. Tippy so toe, I, tippy I go toe. in and I'm like, can I bring in three more comics? And then, of course, they're comics, so they start ball busting. They're like, oh, well, you can't, whatever. Yep. And then there's a lady there. Oh, God. And it's always hard because when you're visiting a town, you feel very like stupid. You're walking into their group. Yeah, you're on their turf. Yes, and I try to be mindful of this when people are visiting New York. Yes. But it's not, people are always like, oh, it, comics are clicky. But I'm like, they're just friends. And then there's a non-friend exactly. there. So they're just talking to their friends. So I go, can I bring in my three friends? They go, yeah. And there's one lady there. She's like, whoa, are you Joe List? Are you the famous guy? Uh, I hate the famous Which guy. Which feels a little antagonistic. A little aggressive. She's like, you're the famous. They told us there's a famous guy on. You're some famous guy doing a spot. Yeah. And I go, no, I'm not famous. But anyways, I'm going to bring my friends in. So then you guys all come in. It's a tiny green room. It's small tiny. in the studio. By the way, if you're famous, you'd know. That the, the whole thing doesn't make sense. I know. Keep, it's, it's like being like, you're, are you the rich guy? Are you the millionaire? It's the same thing where you're like, now nah, you make me feel weird. Yes, and I'm not famous because none of you know who I am. Exactly. Anyway, so she's a little strange, and so we all come in there, and she's like the dominant one. She's doing all the talking. You got that right. This and that. And then she starts saying, by the way, the comics couldn't have been nicer. Then she starts saying, and I assume this woman's a comic. I did too. Yeah, so we thought she was just a kooky comic, and she starts talking about Austin, Texas, and her, she just never. She's just really bowling over everybody. Yes, yeah, she was the alpha. Yes, and then she starts talking about how this is a benefit, which I did not know—a mm -mm. benefit about for abusive relationships. They're raising money for people to abuse somebody. I didn't quite domestic catch abuse. It. You know, hitting the hitting the gals there. Domestic abuse, and she started giving us stats like one in three murder victims is a woman, one in two women will be beaten, 
And this is a comedy club, folks. You know, we're about to go on, and we're getting pummeled with the uh, stats. Ironically, we're getting hit. So <laughs> these are serious stats, and it's serious business. And I feel terrible for the women who have been abused. Sure, but at the same time, I'm nervous. I'm out of. I'm going on in eight minutes. I'm a guest in a world famous comedy club. Yeah, you're in Europe first. And I'm up first, and she's like, you cannot talk about relationship, you can't talk about this, you can't talk about that. And then one of the comics, black guy, started to be like, well, who are you to say what we could talk Exactly. He kind of got into it with her. By the way, and then she pointed to a woman <laughs> who was in a, a burqa, is that the right term? Yeah, yeah. Which, that doesn't matter, I'm just painting a picture. That part doesn't matter, but she's a woman, she's like, she can talk about whatever she wants. Which doesn't really fly, that doesn't make sense. That's when the... The guy started to be like, what does that mean? I don't yeah. get it. I, he's like, I'm going to talk about whatever I want. And I appreciated him. And then we kind of got distracted because it was like the, one of those tense arguments. So you're yep. like, okay. But they started debating. But this this whole idea of like, you can't talk about anything, but she can. Yeah. That's, I don't understand that. It, it, it negates the whole thing. Like, can we talk about this or can we not? But you can because you have a vagina and you can't because you're a dick. Uh, it, it's all topsy-turvy. It was quite puzzling. But it was enough to throw me into like, uh, I can't talk, oh Jesus, this is a benefit. And then I'm like asking quietly, I'm like, how many of the audience, because it was packed, I was like, how many people are just regular, we're going to see a show, and how many people are here for like a domestic violence thing? Yeah. And then the lady, so this is when we find out, she goes on first to talk about the charity. Always great comedy. Which is when we realize that she's not a comedian. <laughs> right, you got that right. Which before, I try to be really love all comedians. So once sure. I found out she's not a comedian, I'm like, fuck this woman. Yeah, she's out. I was like holding on to some liking of her because she's a comic. I thought she was crazy. Yeah. So then you're just like, who is this woman? Why? And so she goes up and talks about it, domestic abuse. Oh, yeah. Hilarious. Uh, and it was like serious domestic abuse talk. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is brutal. So now I'm all in my head. I'm all nervous. I'm all anxious. Then I go on stage, and the woman... That woman comes and sits in the second row. Second She's lit row with her friend, also a woman. And my whole at, my opening joke is about wanting to kill yourself. Yeah. And right away they were like this. Oh, I and watched her watch like, you. They it was start brutal. like talking to each other like this, and they're right there. I know. And so then I clam. I was clam. You choke. Oh my god, I choked. I clammed. I, I, it was just brutal. And then I start talking about my wife because my whole act is about relationships. Sure. And you gotta make fun of her. That's comedy. So I'm just like shitting on a woman. I'm like, she's older than me. She sucks. She's this. She's that. <laughs> she's dumb. I want to hit her. And then, and then they're just like, the whole time they're like doing this. And like, oh, oh, yeah. It was like a cartoon. Yeah, it was rough. And, and you know, this is all compounding. So now you got, I'm the visitor. I'm in a foreign country. I'm going up first. It's an abuse thing. She's in the front row. All my act is, or most of my act is about material, I mean about relationships. It's a lot of uh, shit swirling above you. It's all pipes and I, I'm famous for God's sakes, and and the the, the bookers there, the, the local comics are there, and it's packed, and I'm getting like teehees, right? And then I'm trying. I have another joke. I realize I say cunt in it, so oh. I had to like edit that. I edit like the best punchlines in a bit on the fly. I ate a bag of cheese. I went to the comedy store and ate. Shit! It was fascinating to watch, and I felt for you because we've. And then you go to Top Secret, and you murder. I went to Top Secret. I got them on tape. It's like the two best sets I've ever had in my life. Same exact material, but you're loose and you're delivering it, and there's not someone talking about domestic violence. And I, I just think that is not a play. If you have a foundation for domestic violence, oh, God, of don't course, do stand up. Have it. Have a cornhole tournament or a yes. softball tournament. Or a boxing tournament, or some kind of thing. It's like doing a, a diabetes uh, talk at a, at a candy store, or like the Hershey plant. Like, what are we doing here? This is a comedy club. This is not your benefit place to get the the word out on domestic abuse. And it's just uh, you have to be uninhibited to properly do stand up comedy. You, you gotta can't be. have rules. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, so it was it was tough, and uh, the whole walk over to the Top Secret. But it's amazing how it just turns around. You go on a Top Secret. And just rock and roll over there. You got that right. It. I don't know. What, what do you think? Because I, I had those hot sets at Top Secret. Then I had the, the mediocre sets where like I could see they were like, this guy's offensive. He's a bad guy. He's edgy or whatever the hell they want to say. He's inappropriate. He's problematic. And you go, well, what do I do here? Do I change my act to, to fit them? Or do I just... Go to my own people, but then you're like, I want to be good for everybody. Right. So it's it's this weird thing where I'm in the shower, like, 
what do I do here? Do I try to appease the haters and change for them, or do I just stick with the people who like me? Or, or is that is that a cop out? No, you don't appease the haters. That's for sure. Okay. Unless you're in a situation where it's like this is a benefit and you'll ruin our night if you talk about this. That's the situation where you're like, I didn't, know, I wouldn't have said yes to this. Ah, I see. You okay. need to have, you know, whoever. And there's great comics that can be clean and that's what I'm saying. I want to be a great comic. But there's great comics that aren't that. The best True. comics aren't that. All right. Okay. You got a point. Okay. I mean, when you name your favorite comedians, you're not, most of them aren't squeaky clean. True. True. But I mean, maybe maybe Seinfeld, I guess. Regan, Regan, Gaffigan. Yeah, I guess some of them are. There's some great ones. But, you know, you, you also know we know a lot of bad comedians who just stick with their people and they do their little bubble and they don't grow and they don't get better and they just, uh, it's agreeance comedy. Well, so you, you don't want to be that either. But you don't want to do it for your people. You want to do what you think is funny. Sure. And then the people come to you. I mean, okay. that's like, that's what the real great art is. You look to Dylan. Yes. Bob Tim. Dylan, they're like booing him off stage, but he just found a new audience. He's like, this is what I'm doing because this is what right. I want to do. So you got to do what you want to do. What's in your heart? What's in your fart? And what makes you laugh? Shark box, shark tank. And as Bob Dylan also said, it's important for an artist to never arrive at a place. Huh. I got to, what do you mean? With the flights? We got to arrive. <laughs> And depart. What are you talking about? Well, you don't want to just be, I'm this. Now I'm this. Uh, I do to... this thing for these people. You want to reinvent. Yeah, you want to, you know, you want to do what you want to do. Right. I mean, look at Carlin. I mean, Bill Burr said it well. He said, Carlin, every seven years, became a different comedian and said, if you're coming with me, great. If you don't, fuck you. I'm, I'm going this way. There you go. Fuck you. I'm getting in the plane. Not getting on the plane. The terminal <laughs> snack bar. He was fun. Good, good comic. But yeah, okay, that that helps. I'm yeah. in the tub going, what do I do? Do I become more like them? Do I appease? Don't appease. Well, I had this two I specials ago. I literally was like, you know what? There's so much money in clean. Yeah. I used to do clean. I'm going to do a clean hour just to show everybody I can. Yeah. I'll do some corporate. I'll, do, I'll, I'll just fuck. I'll get on, you get on more serious radio. Yep. And I'm like, I'm going to make... Way more money because I'll be a. Cl- I'm gonna do a clean hour. Yeah, oh yeah. And then I'll go do whatever I want. And then I started writing. And then you're like the first joke I came up with is a shit joke, and then another shit joke, and then a sex joke. Whatever happens, you're like I'm gonna talk about that because that's funny. Ah, oh, that watch. And I think you hate the watch. You're pretty clean. Like I wouldn't call uh, you a dirty comedian. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just like I think both of us. Like I'll talk about gay and black and Jew, and you'll talk about shit and fuck and queef, but. I wouldn't put us in the raunchy category. But like not I, raunchy, but not clean. It's not like this raunchy and clean. We're true, in between. But I'm saying I don't think we're we're horrific. You know, some people are like, Jesus, I saw their act and now I need a shower. I don't think we're that. No, but it's like it's a bunch of shit jokes. That's a lot of sex jokes. But you got a joke about getting on a roller coaster. That's true. But even in that, I'm like talking about <laughs> kissing a kid. That's true. And then I talk about suicide. So uh, it's like, yeah, it's no point. subtle thing. Like, well, you're talking clean, clean, like perform for an abused wives foundation yeah. or, or the Pope in right, Gaffigan. Right. That becomes clean is like a crazy thing now. Clean is You can't tough. be like referencing killing yourself. No. Which no. I do in every other joke. I got that old story. I, this kid saw me somewhere and he goes, I do a show, a church show in Harlem. And can you be clean for 10 minutes? I said, yeah, 10 minutes. I got that church show. I love Harlem. I love God. Let's do it. I was killing. Five minutes in, I, I go, so my gay roommate, and he goes, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. You said clean. He's like, you can't talk about fucking gays. I was like, that's clean. He's a, he's a, he's a, he exists. He's my roommate. He, 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 couldn't, he couldn't understand it. Yeah, that's tough. Well, but that's clean. I wasn't fucking the gay roommate. I wasn't blowing the gay roommate. He was blowing me. Yeah. That's uh, totally clean. Yes. I cleaned up after. Clean is my gun. Yeah, hotter than a two dollar pistol. All right. So we got well, I assume we have to wrap it up here. I feel like this has been going on for a month. Fifty seven. Oh. Fifty seven. Fifty seven oh. Chevy. Yeah, yes. There you go. There you go. You should see what a 44 Magnum can do to a woman's pussy. That you should see. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, we got to wrap it up. We got we to. It's a big day over here. Did you bring a change of outfits? I forgot. I got seven T-shirts over here because okay. we're recording two in one day. Because I'm going away for a month. Can I borrow? Maybe I'll just wear the backpack or something. Well, I got Throw a couple. A we'll see. Yeah. All right. But uh, we got to wrap up with big, big things, big news happening. I got to plug. I keep forgetting to plug. I'm doing. I have a job in baseball. I'm doing a, oh, a yeah. show. How cool it's is that? Wednesday nights from 7 to 10 
Eastern Time. You do the math for all the other time zones. It's PBLRoundup.com. It's me and Tom Brenneman. Wow, the legend. Legendary broadcaster. And uh, Bill Bavasi, I think is how you say his name. He's an old GM for the Anaheim Angels, Seattle Mariners. And we're talking baseball. We had Pete Rose on. Wow. I chatted with Pete Rose. Rosie. We had Charles Barkley on. The Bark. All, we're all gambling <laughs> addicts. <laughs> Uh, it's crazy. I'm on there. I'm, I'm bad at <laughs> I'm bad at promoting. We got uh, Michael Jordan on next week. Yeah, and, and, Norm um, McDonald. Yeah, Norm McDonald and Artie Lang coming on. <laughs> um, but check it out Wednesday nights. PBLRoundup.com. It, it's the Pioneer Baseball League. And then the big, big crazy news. If you want to go watch the premiere of the movie Fourth of July, the trailer is out. Go watch it. If you want to see the premiere, you got to act fast because we got June 30th Beacon Theater. Ooh. July 1st, Schubert Theater. July 2nd, Vic Theater in Chicago. Limited tickets available. We're in the couple hundreds left in all three shows, so get them today. Wow. We're going to watch the movie. It'll be Louie and I doing Q&A with Ron Bennington. Speaking of legends. They're going to be fun, magical nights. Come on out. Get yourself a ticket. I'm out of comp, so don't ask. Oh, shit. I was going to ask. You're out of town. Well, my lady wants to go. Uh, We could probably find her. All right. But uh, now here's the annoying question that you're not going to like. Oh, boy. Are you filming it, the Beacon? I got to reach out to Sweet Lou, Big Lou. I, I don't know. I think we should, I, I guess. I think you should, Put it too. on the YouTubes. Uh, Jason Katz offered to do it. Oh, so. even if it's just a clip or a, a reel or what do you call it, a uh, the highlights. Ah. Just the high- We don't need to see the full hour, but just give me the goods. Yeah, maybe we'll get to, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll film it. It will be on serious radio. The audio will be oh, on okay. serious. That's going to play. That's something. So uh, it's going to be big. It's going to be fun. Get excited. And the movie will stream uh, later down the road, but it's going to be in the local theaters. And reach out to your local theater. Email them. Tweet at them. Say, we want to see Fourth of July in our goddamn theater. Uh, here, here. Good, good time. I mean, the beacon, Jerry. I can't believe it. That's so prestigious. It's such a... It's a- 300 no, 3000 seater too. Yeah, it's like 28 something. By the way, I got a I'll tease. I went to see Nate Saturday night. There's ah, your tease for next week. Is he in town? He was at the Beacon. Whoa! Yeah. Two oh, shows. I can't wait to hear about this. Whew. All right. So, that's the beauty of New York. There's something there's every kind of person here. You know, you go, "Hey, they're doing a Trump rally in Manhattan. Who's going to go to that shit?" And then it fills up. Oh, then yeah. they have a K-pop band at the Guard. You're like, "Who's going to that shit?" It fills up. New York has everything. Eight and a half million. Oh, I got to plug stand updates too. Sorry. Punchline San Francisco this weekend. Uh, I think there's limited tickets available for that too. And then Vancouver Rickshaw Theater on Sunday. Somebody walked me to the gate. I'm, I'm scared to death. I heard it's all kooks. Kookville. June 24th and 25th, Atlanta Punchline. The weekend before that, in between the two, Magoobies. There we go. Okay. Yeah. For the guy who takes off, you know, goes to concerts, goes overseas, takes uh, Maine, goes swimming. You got a lot cooking. You got a movie coming out. You just put a special out, which I believe is a nipping at the one million heels. Yeah, nine and a half hundred thousand. Oh, well, let's push that over this week. This week, and uh, yeah, movie coming out, new material, doing the road. I uh, I'm at Magoobies this weekend. Lexington, Houston, San Antonio, Chicago, Cleveland, Minneapolis. And uh, all kinds of stuff, marknomancomedy.com. The, the winter dates are coming out. I'm doing the Wilbur. Woo! I'm really pushing Woo! forward. We're going to Beantown. We're going all over Woo! Seattle, Portland, Vancouver. And, uh, yeah, check out all the goods, whatever. I got a Patreon, too. Get on our Patreon. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see the movie. Can't wait. George is saying cut it. Praise Allah. No.